Hey everybody, Navidoc5184 here and welcome to the reaction to the finale of Star Wars Ahsoka. So I am not going to lie, I am a little nervous on this because I did catch the runtime on this as being under an hour, which as I said last week, I really don't know how, at the very least, all the questions I have um, is going to be answered in that short time, but then again, with the way Dave filoni has been doing his stuff, I am actually while i'm nervous at the same time i don't feel entirely apprehensive i feel like that he will get the job done um the other thing i will say though is i've noticed that a lot of times you know it's like i just don't see just finale like i see season finale which maybe signals to me that there will be a season two or at least they have a season two planned if not maybe a movie or something i don't know but all I know is that I'm very curious to see, you know, what does Ahsoka have to say to Sabine in regards to giving the star map to Balin because you know that that confrontation has to happen. Uh, you know, how are they going to stop Thrawn even? I was about to ask, you know, how do they stop Thrawn from returning? But the question, maybe they don't stop him. And what, you know, they're stranded on Peridia or do they all go back together? Uh, do they stop Thrawn and use the ring to get back themselves? What is it that Balin is after? What is Shin gonna do? Is she gonna, um, you know, link back up with Thrawn? Because I imagine that she's gotta feel utterly betrayed right now by not only Thrawn, but by Balin as well. But very curious to see what goes on with those stories. What is it that Balin is after? And I will say this, if there is, if there was meant to be multiple seasons or follow-ups to this, man, I really wonder what they're going to do with Balin's Gold, because Ray Stevenson, boy oh boy, has he knocked that character out of the park. He has turned into one of my favorite Star Wars characters, and very interested to know really all of his backstory, and what is it that he has in mind, what does he want to accomplish, and, you know just so many questions that I don't know if they can be answered in under an hour but again I have faith in Dave Filoni we'll see what he had in store and again maybe that the maybe this is meant to springboard into a future season I don't know we'll see how it ends but either which way I'm really looking forward to it the series thus far I feel has been absolutely outstanding I feel like each episode has gotten better and better and I think even um, episode I don't want to say episode six was so much of a slowdown because that was one where Thrawn did return I feel like the last episode uh, that we just had episode seven was kind of like that one that kind of slowed the pace down a little bit but not too much because we had a lot of action in that one too i've seen a few people try to call that a filler episode which i really don't see how that can be considered a filler episode because that did progress the story it wasn't like it was just there just to be there which to me is what a filler is where if you took it out of the series at all it would have no effect on the story um, I don't get that sense from episode 7, so I don't know why people are calling that a filler episode, but um, either way, let's just go ahead and get started and see how this ends, and uh, for those of you who are members, uh, feel free to join me in the watch along here. You can use the timer um, in the bottom right corner to know exactly where I am in the show, and also if you are a member, you can also get an ad-free version of this particular reaction, so let's go ahead and get started. Cargo transfer is complete. Good. Very good indeed. Homescan believes they have a fix on the Jedi shuttle's location. Dispatch two TIE fighters if they find their mark. Tell them to engage. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of surprised he's taken that approach. Even I fell victim to the heroics of a single Jedi. Never again. How do you think you got there in the first place? Uh oh. Uh oh. You know what's the most unsettling about this is Thrawn just sitting there watching this as if a military promotion. And how he is not even affected at all by watching this. Um. 
I've got a bad feeling about this. The blade of Talson. And look at him. How do they get out of this? This is not making me feel good at all. The blade emitter is too narrow. Now look here, I've been teaching younglings how to construct lightsabers longer than you've been alive. That's great. He's got a point there, Ezra. Stop that. Everything in here is organized. Yeah, disorganized. You, sir, have a method. Yes. Not a system or anything resembling a process. Exactly. A lightsaber anyway? Kanan Jarrus. Is that so? And I taught him how to build a lightsaber. I taught almost every youngling at the Jedi Temple, including your master. How old are you? Old enough to know that the relationship between a master and an apprentice is as challenging as it is meaningful. Dude, Hu Yang just has a way. Well done. Nice. Looks like you were a good student. I have a feeling that line about Master and Apprentice really got to Sabine. She's probably going to go try to talk to Ahsoka now. Never thought I'd see him again. She, she seems to understand. Him. Had you chosen differently. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Just had to pull the Han Solo on her, huh? <laughs> Over the years, I've made my share of difficult choices. Often no one understood my reasons. Except my master, Anakin. He always stood by me. There we go. That's what I was wanting to see. When no one else did. That's why, no matter what happens next, I'm going to be there for you. Sabine really needed that. Have you kept up with your training? <laughs> I, I try. I do. I do. Do or do not. There is no try. Train your mind. Train your body. Trust in the Force. You can definitely tell that last training session with Anakin really did a great number for her. Oh, dang, I already forgot about them. No, not the naughty. No. Don't hurt the little turtle creatures. Yeah, get get out from under the ship. It's gonna crush y'all. Oh no, they're coming around for another pass. Oh no! Uh, you only get a short burst out of the engines that way. More than I need. Uh, oh, are you gonna ramp? Yep. The ship's pretty much a goner. This is gonna slow us down a bit. Only if we let it. What exactly she got in mind? Oh, they're using the howlers. Okay. May the force be with you. You know, normally I don't think about much when they say that, but that makes me very uneasy. Great mothers shall protect you in battle against the Jedi. Go now. Let none pass. All will honor to make the sacrifice. It is for the Empire, the security of our galaxy. That's what you want to call it. Rain hellfire upon them. There'd be no negotiating with the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker. So, I gotta know, because he just keeps referring to him as Anakin. Does he know Anakin turns to Vader? Because I know it was hinted in Obi-Wan Kenobi that, you know, only a few you know, knew who Vader was. So would Thrawn know that Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader? Alright, so I'm going to say this. I don't know how effective she's being, but I appreciate the fact that she just went at it without hesitation. Ooh, y'all cut that one close. I 
I'm not even gonna lie, that is a really cool sight. Fall back. Draw them out. I'm not gonna lie, I appreciate the fact that Sabine it's like now that she's found Ezra, it feels like she's a lot more balanced and you can kinda of tell like she was definitely working her lightsaber a lot better. Man, look at Ezra go, my dude. Nice. Oh, that was a cool visual right there. Oh, this ain't good. This ain't good. Oh, oh. Ezra. This ever happened before? No. This is new. Lucky us. Are they zo like zombie troopers now? Because they definitely aren't moving like just regular resurrected troopers. They look like zombies. Uh oh. And they are going down. They're even. Dude, they done made a zombie stormtroopers. Okay. Okay. I. I. Um. Oh, nicely done, Sabine. Woo! Nicely done. Yeah, she has definitely improved with that with those saber skills. Oh my goodness. Okay. Nice moves. She's been training. What's your excuse? I missed you. A nice little moment of levity, but uh, y'all might want to get moving. You got a horde of zombie stormtroopers. Man, it isn't that a sentence? I mean, I guess it fits. I mean, we're going in, you know, we're in October, Halloween month. I got Halloween theme for everything. Might as well have zombie stormtroopers. We require a little more time. I understand. Oh, are we going to have an Ahsoka Morgan rematch? Oh, here it is. I'm not gonna lie, that's a really cool visual with the lightsabers, the green, the white, and the blue. Okay, so, uh, might as well be Beskar again. Woo, woo, woo. This is not the same Morgan Elsbeth you dealt with last time, Ahsoka. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Oh! Okay, so those troopers have Beskar armor, it appears like. So, how do you take them down? Um. What is that? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on! Whoa! Yeah, there you go. Finally! That'll do it. I still want to know what those are. Dang, they just bought them just enough time. How are they going to get on the ship? Oh, dang, she got to deal with Morgan and the zombie troopers. Oh, man, this makes me extremely nervous. Okay, that was okay. I was about to say, please tell me. Nice. Oh no. Sabine's doing what Ahsoka wanted her to do. She's stopping Thrawn. But I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish she would stay she stayed to help. 
I mean, as weird as it sounds, this almost feels like Ahsoka and Anakin. And you will die here. Alone. Not alone. She did say! Oh! I can already tell how much that means to Ahsoka. Because she's probably thinking her and Anakin... You know, and when she left Anakin and how bad she felt about leaving Anakin. So seeing that that didn't happen to her, that's got to make her feel good. Oh, 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 the down goes Morgan. She has done what was required. Oh, man, that's got to feel so weird for him. They came back for him and now he's about to leave them behind. Okay, what exactly do you have in mind? Who Yang, my man! <laughs> I don't even know why I'm saying my man. I'll be like my droid. Oh, man. And, oh, I don't know. They got a nice amount of speed there. Are they going to be able to catch up? Ahsoka Tano, allow me to commend you on your efforts today. You've been quite a worthy opponent. I regret we haven't met face to face, and perhaps now we never shall. I know you, because I knew your master. I concluded your strategies would be similar. Well, we gathered that. Just how similar you might become. Perhaps this is where a Ronin such as you belongs. He knows. Today, victory is mine. Long live the Empire. Oh. Oh no. 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 Are you serious? They're stranded? How did they get home? Well, that's a twist. I mean, I figured if anybody was going to get stranded, it would have been everybody. I mean, at least Ezra's on there, but wow. You know, I just realized we're almost 36 minutes into this. Not one thing from Balin, not one thing from Shin. What is going on? I mean, we still got some time left in the episode, so something can still come up, but... Oh, what's going on here? Well, hello, old friend. Maybe they're meant to stay there. Oh, speak of devils and they shall appear. Oh, she looks very displeased. Wait, is she going to join them? Oh, there's Balin. Wait a minute. Is that what I think it is? It's the father. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, where are they? Approaching Dathomir, we're in that room. Oh no. Oh, that's their home. Oh, is that gonna be where his base of operations is? Now what's that? Oh, that has to be Ezra. He had to have commandeered one of their shuttles. That's the only thing I can think of. Well, I mean, everybody's on edge, rightfully so. Oh, yeah, no, that's totally Ezra. That's totally Ezra. <laughs> nice. All right. I wish Senator Ziono could be there to see this. Hi, Hera. Mm -hmm. She looks like she's about to pass out. <laughs> Ezra's where he needs to be. And so are we. And they might be. I mean, 
I forget that owl's name, but I know it's very linked to Ahsoka, so they very well could be meant to be there. You know, I gotta say, for this being such an action-packed episode, there's a lot of emotion with this, too. What is it? You see something? Nothing. Okay. It's shadows in the starlight. Curious? She had to have felt something. Soka's feeling it too. Whatever it is, based on the score and her reaction, it's not a bad thing. Alright everybody, that was the finale of Star Wars Ahsoka, The Jedi, The Witch, and The Warlord, and if that's not a Narnia title, I don't know what is. I'm not gonna lie, that last scene got me a little bit. Seeing Anakin as an actual force ghost, watching over Ahsoka, that, see I think that's just so that was one of the main themes I got with that particular episode, the whole idea of the, I guess you could say, relationship between Master and Apprentice, because we're hearing it between um, Ezra and Kanan, and then, you know, obviously with Ahsoka and Sabine, but then Ahsoka talking about her and Anakin and how no matter what, Anakin always had her back, and how she was always going to have Sabine's. And then even seeing it play out again. And th I think that was part of the reason why I had hoped that Sabine was going to stay to help Ahsoka. Even though I would have probably completely understood if she went with Ezra to try to stop Thrawn. Because that's what Ahsoka wanted her to do. But it felt a lot better for me for Sabine to stay because of that whole master and apprentice relationship. And I think it also played huge for Ahsoka emotionally because you know one of the things that she always felt bad about was her leaving the Jedi Order and and the way she always worded it was leaving Anakin and even Balin Skull used that against Ahsoka so I know that that meant so much for Ahsoka for her apprentice when she had a chance to leave but she chose to stay to help her master. I, kn I mean, you could almost see that even put Ahsoka into a whole nother level when she was fighting Morgan. It's, and it's really crazy. I mean, if you really look throughout all of Star Wars, the whole relationship between the master and the apprentice, it's, I mean, even with Dooku and Qui-Gon Jinn, I mean, you saw, how crushed Dooku was when Qui-Gon Jinn was killed. Even though he was working with Palpatine at the time, he was still crushed when his apprentice was killed. You saw how crushed Obi-Wan Kenobi was when Anakin fell. You know, you saw how important, you know, it Luke was to Obi-Wan to make sure, you know, he was, you know, brought along. You know, Luke with Rey. I know a lot of people really don't really count the sequels, but I personally really like sequels, but that's a whole nother topic for another thing. But still, with Luke and Rey, or Leia and Rey even, you know, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. I mean, we can go on and on. Kanan and Ezra. It's... That relationship is just so important. And it was really nice to see that really be focused on them. there. really added a lot of emotion mixed in with the action. And I'm telling you what. Freaking zombie stormtroopers, what the deuce. <laughs> that was crazy. I will say this, the only thing, if I had to say disappointed with, was that we didn't get more Balin and Shin. But at the same time, really looking at it, I don't think we necessarily needed it. I think like with me is because I still want so badly to know 
what's going on, especially now after what we just saw with Balin on the statue of the father. I mean, A, what's going on with that? Is it the father calling to him? Is it the son calling to him? And how come there wasn't a figure of the daughter? I mean, so many questions with that. And at the same time, that's also so heartbreaking because if his story, I'm sure that the, the way this ended, there is more story to be told and there is more story planned to be told. What are they going to do with Balin Skull's character? Because the way Ray Stevenson played him, holy crap, how is anybody even going to match it? I don't see how anybody can match that. And it's like, how do you even continue that story? That it's turned into one of the more interesting stories that we would have gotten if, if there's going to be a season two with this, which I don't see how there can't be a season two. There has to be, at the very least, a season two, if not a movie. But it's like, how do you do that without Ray? Because he killed that role. He is pro definitely one of my favorite characters in this whole series so far. And what is Shin gonna do? It looks like she's like gonna. I don't know if she plans on leading those nomads. Maybe she's gonna try to take over that particular planet. I don't know. But that in itself is gonna be an interesting story. And you know what's actually even crazy about that though? Is even though Balin and Shin aren't Sith, it's amazing how balance is still a story here because you got Balin and Shin Ahsoka and Sabine that is totally set I mean this is so set up for a beautifully long story to be told because you got everything going on in that one galaxy you got everything going on in with Thrawn returning but you got Ezra back with Hera and who knows, Ezra may even train Jason, you know, and who's to say Luke won't even show up in this? Because based on what we've seen here, this is definitely post season three of The Mandalorian. And you know what? I have been hearing about like a, a Mandalorian movie. What if there's a crossover? What if everything builds up to a big crossover between the Mandalorian and Ahsoka here. I just, I'm not gonna try to theorize anything. I hate coming up with theories because I feel like when you try to come up with theories, when you try to come up with stories, if things don't turn out that way, it's only gonna breed disappointment. But the idea does excite me. I feel like Luke could very well be a part of this. Maybe with the new, uh, a Jedi Order, maybe Ben Solo will be somehow thrown into this mix. I don't know. But the bottom line is, we know that while Thrawn always says for the Empire, his return has got to be something in the form of the catalyst of the beginning of the First Order. So this could be a whole like Revenge of the Sith turn where, you know, you got this whole battle where it looks like everything's going to end, but it's like with, with Revenge of the Sith, that's where the Empire rises. This could, we could be seeing the, a similar thing where it's like the whole story up to the rise where the First Order is finally established. But, I mean, there's so many different routes they could go, but, I mean, Ray Stevenson was fantastic in this. I love this series. I know there's a lot there's probably going to be a lot of people that are very disappointed with A, how short this was and the fact that there are still a lot of questions to be had. But I'm looking at it in the sense of I love long term storytelling. So I like the fact that they didn't tell all the story in this one season and they're letting us know that there is plenty more story to be told. And they have set that up so well. The only hangup I have is Balin Skull's character. What do they do with that? Outside of that, I i mean, anything I could really complain about, I feel like it's just nitpicking. But this has got to be some of the best Star Wars I've seen in a long time. And I cannot wait to see how they continue the story. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing if they have a season two for this. Maybe they'll even do a movie. Um, whenever... 
because I've been hearing that there is going to be another season of Mandalorian. So if there is, I'll pro I'll definitely be reacting to that series as well. But geez, fantastic! I absolutely love this, and I don't I don't really know what more I can say. I am gonna gather my thoughts throughout the next week. Um, I will say this next weekend, um, probably later Saturday night, I am gonna have a live stream to discuss this series so I'm gonna take my time try to get some thoughts together and basically go over everything that I got from this maybe check and see things that I might have missed um, but basically just looking forward to having a really good conversation with y'all about this series what did you think what do you hope to see come out from it and what things did you all get out of it but either which way really looking forward to that and this was an absolute joy to watch i really enjoyed reacting to this and watching this i'm definitely gonna watch over it all again like i said to kind of see what i might miss but either which way um that's gonna pretty much do it for that that was star wars ahsoka absolutely fantastic looking forward to more and i will catch y'all down the road